with a couple of personal experiences. At the Railway Minister of India, I visit a number of places and meet a large number of people from all walks of life. On one visit to Mumbai Central Station, I was pleasantly surprised to find a group of women engaged in cleaning. The station looked very clean. On seeing me, a lady came and thanked me for allowing her NGO to adopt the station. For the last five months, she had been volunteering a day every month at the station. She said that she felt very happy to be contributing a little bit to this national cause. In another incident, Alok Tiwari, an inspector in the Railway Protection Force, recently deputed to the social media sale of the Railway Board, shared his sentiments. He is responsible for taking action on passengers' request for help on social media. He said that for the first time in his professional career, he has realized how his little actions were making a huge difference in passengers' lives. He felt enthused and proud to be part of Indian Railways. Madam Speaker, it is the people like this who are the soul of India and Indian Railways. And that is why this is not my budget alone. This is a budget which reflects the aspirations of each and every member of the railway family, a budget that reflects the aspirations of the common citizens of India, who have not only been writing to me, interacting with me on social media, but also meeting me in large numbers to share their thoughts. This is a budget that has been fashioned by a creative partnership with ideas from my colleagues in the parliament, industry associations, commuter associations, media, and practically all sections of society. I would like to thank each one of you. But above all, this budget owes its inspiration to the vision and leadership of a Prime Minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. He had once said, my vision is to make railways the backbone of India's progress and economic development. We are making all-out efforts to translate his vision into reality. A core objective is to improve the quality of customer experience at the individual level, becoming an engine of employment generation and economic growth at the national level and convert India's largest institution into a template for transformation. Yatri ki garima, rail ki gati, rashtra ki pradati. This budget will document a journey of transformation, the journey of a nation by touching millions of human lives daily. These are challenging times, maybe one of the toughest. We are faced with two headwinds, entirely beyond our control, rapid growth of our economy's core sectors, due to international slowdown and the looming impact of the seventh pay commission and increased productivity bonus payouts. Further, historically, declining moderate share of Indian railways which dropped from 62% in 1980 to 36% in 2012 is a continuing to exert pressure on the institution. At this moment, I am reminded of a former Prime Minister Sri Atal Bihari Vajpayee's few lines. Vipadaye aati hai, aye. हम न रुकेंगे हम न रुकेंगे आघातों की क्या चिंता है हम न झुकेंगे हम न झुकेंगे रेलवे इज एन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन हैज टू द टेस्ट ऑफ टाइम ड्यू टू द शेयर ग्रीट एंड कमिटमेंट ऑफ इट्स एम्प्लॉयज हेवर दी चैलेंजिंग टाइम्स रिक्वायर ओवरऑल ओवरऑल ऑफ अवर वर्क कल्चर एंड एथॉस सीमेंटेड ओवर इयर्स लास्ट ईयर आई हैड अनवेल द मीडियम टर्म विजन फॉर द रेलवे वी सेट अस ऑन इट्स ट्रांसफॉर्मेशनल जर्नी फॉर विच वी नाउ need to reorganize, restructure, and rejuvenate this institution. We need to bring in a new approach, a new way of working. Chalo, milkar kuch naya kare. The three pillars of the strategy that I'm laying out today reflects this new thought process. New, now urgent, new revenues. Our Indian Railway typically has focused on increasing revenues through tariff hikes. We want to change that and challenge our conventional thinking on freight policies to win back our share on the transportation sector. We will exploit new sources of revenue so that every asset, tangible or non-tangible, gets optimally monetized. New manak, new norms, each rupee that get expensed will be re-examined to ensure optimal productivity. We will take a zero-based budgeting approach to the financials in the ensuing year. We will improve our efficiency yardsticks and procurement practices to bring them in line with international best practices. We will continue to innovate and optimize our outgo on each activity. Now, Sanarachana, new structures. We need to reimagine the conventional ways of solving issues 
Cooperation, collaboration, creativity, and communication should be the hallmark of our decision making and actions. We will revisit all processes, rules, and structures to enable this and transformation. We will draw upon our inherent strengths, diverse talents, and deep experience to emerge stronger. I am reminded of Harvansh Rai Bachchan ji when he said, "No woman, no tarang, jivan ka nava prasam, naval cha, naval raha." जीवन का नव प्रवाह मैडम फॉर द इयर 2016-17 वी एक्सपेक्ट एन ऑपरेटिंग रेशियो ऑफ 92 परसेंट आफ्टर इंक्लूडिंग द इमीजिएट इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द सेवन पे कमीशन एज अगेंस्ट 90 परसेंट लाइकली टू बी अचीव इन द करंट ईयर इट इज पर्टिन टू नोट दैट ऑर्डिनरी वर्किंग एक्सपेंसिज ग्रू बाय थर्टी टू पॉइंट इन ईयर टू थाउजेंड ड्यू टू द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ द सिक्स पे कमीशन while we are targeting to restrict the growth of ordinary expenses only by 11.6% in 2016-17 this has been largely possible due to extensive cost optimization and revenue enhancement through innovative means than next year we have already made humble beginning in this direction as a result of which a saving of 8720 crores from the budget estimates last year would be effected this year neutralizing the most of the revenue shortfall we significantly reduce the cost of power procured for taxation by signing long term agreements brought down inventory carrying cost and launched austerity dives in the next year we are increasing the rigor on cost optimization multifold for the first time absolute reductions as compared to the previous year have been planned in categories like diesel and electricity through concrete and rigorous planning further with an optimistic outlook for the economy and various measures outlined later we hope to generate revenues of the order of 184820 crore next year 10.1% higher than the revised target for the current year the statement of financial performance for 2015-16 and budget estimate for receipts and expenditure for 2016-17 is that a next one investment we have ramped up capital expenditure to remove the huge backlog of the past as well as to provide for the current and future needs of the organization we have overhauled age old practices bottlenecks and delegated powers effectively to the functional levels as a result the rate of capital expenditure has increased substantially in the later quarters of this year and should now grow exponentially we will continue to employ this new approach for capital expenditure we have managed to break away from the average capital expenditure used to be 48100 crores over the period 2009 to 2014 and an average growth of only 8% per annum to achieve a quantum jump this year our investment would be close to double of the average of previous years a feat never achieved earlier for the year 2016-17 the capital plan has been paid at 1.21 lakh crores 1 lakh 21000 crores this magnitude of investment calls for abandoning the business as usual approach and continuously innovating to find new ways of sourcing funds and to look at executing projects be it by forming joint ventures with states developing new framework for ppp scouting international markets for rupee bonds or engaging with multilateral and bilateral agencies we will be at the forefront of infrastructure growth in the country we have for the first time incorporated a statement in the ping book of sanctioned works a list of partnership projects been undertaken with state governments and other agencies every rupee of investment in railways has the capacity to increase economy wide output by percentage of by a factor of 5 the impact that this increased investment in railways will have on the economic growth of the country is unprecedented it would also lead to realizing the vision of a modern and efficient railway system the vision is the railways must provide to the citizens of this country a rail system that they can be proud of a system free from capacity constraint a system that is efficient and predictable a system that is sparkling and pristine where the people of my country feel at ease where there is a plenty of choice in every sphere of activity and the ease of doing business pervades the entire railway ecosystem in short a system that is capable of taking care of its own needs 
financially and otherwise. By 2020, we look forward to meeting the long-felt desires of the common man of this country. One, reserved accommodation on tents being available on demand. Timetable freight tents with credible service commitments. High and technology, high and technology to significantly improve safety record. Elimination of all unmanned level crossings. Punctuality increased to almost 95 percent. Increased average speed of freight trains to 50 kilometers per hour and mail express trains to at least 80 kilometers per hour. Semi-high speed trains running along the golden quadrilateral, zero direct discharge of human waste. I am thankful to the various committees, including the committee chaired by my friend Dr. Debroy, whose recommendations have informed our vision. Many of the recommendations, being already a part of my last year's budget speech, have been expedited implementation, while there is a steady progress on several others. Our Prime Minister demands the conversion of vision into specific reality with speed, efficiency and total transparency. As I stand to deliver my second budget, I am conscious that this is not only a moment for the evolution of new ideas, but also an examination of last year's momentum. Accountability is an ongoing principle in public life. I am happy to announce that action has been initiated on 139 budget announcements made last year. For the first time, an implementation report is included as annexure 2. Madam, let me take a few minutes to dwell on the progress of some of the key initiatives taken during this year. With great pleasure, I wish to inform the House that bankable railway projects are now assured of funding and should be completed within the next three to four years. We have introduced a new way of funding our projects through institutional financing. LIC has agreed to invest Rs 1.5 lakh crores over five years on extremely favorable terms. We are also looking forward to setting up a fund with multilateral assistance from financing railway projects for more resources. During the current financial year, we have been able to set new benchmark on project execution. We will be surpassing the ambitious target of commissioning 2,500 kilometers of broad gauge lines. This will be almost 30 percent higher than the last year. In the next year, we plan to commission 2,800 kilometers of track. This year, we change the metric from completioning to commissioning. Completion can be a misleading term a paper reality. Nothing has started functioning until it has been commissioned. It, it is with pride that I inform this August House that we are poised to commission broad gauge line at a rate of at a rate of seven kilometers per day against the average 4.3 kilometers per day in the last six years. This pace will increase to about 13 kilometers, one three, 13 kilometers per day in 2017-18 and 19 kilometers per day in 1819 and will generate employment of about 9 crore man days in 17-18 and 14 crore man days in year 1819. Electrification, it has been established that electrical taxation is more economical besides being environment friendly. In a business as usual approach, it may take 10 to 15 years to complete the re required electrification, which are targeted to complete in the next few years. We will accelerate the process and increase the pace manifold through innovative approaches of financing and project management, including partnership with Ministry of Power. We will formulate a framework where the net savings from electrification will be able to finance the capital expenditure to minimize the strain on government exchequer. This year, we intend commissioning 1,600 kilometers, which is the highest ever. In the next financial year, we have increased the outlay for railway electrification by almost 50 percent and propose to electrify 2,000 kilometers. Dedicated freight corridor project, the largest infrastructure project in the country, is gaining momentum. I am happy to inform that before this financial year closes, Almost all the contracts for civil engineering works would have been awarded. Since I assumed office, contracts for 24,000 crores have been awarded against 13,000 crores of contracts which were awarded in the previous six years. Given the emphasis on rapid expansion of freight business, it is essential to build 
more dedicated freight corridors for the increased traffic with consequent benefits for the economy and environment. It is proposed to take up the following freight corridors. North-South connecting Delhi to Chennai. East-West connecting Kharagpur to Mumbai. East Coast connecting Kharagpur to Vijaywada. It is proposed to put these three projects on high priority to ensure structuring, award and implementation in a time-bound manner through innovative financing mechanism including PPP. Port connectivity is an important element to ensure seamless logistics to boost countries' imports and exports. Last year, we had launched a coastal connectivity program. I am happy to inform that Tuna port was commissioned this year and rail connectivity projects to ports of Jaigarh, Digi, Revas and Paradip are under implementation. For the year 2016-17, we propose to undertake implementation of rail connectivity for the ports of Nargol and Hazira under PPP. Considering the urgent need to provide connectivity to our ports on, on the 7,517 km coastline, we will positively consider to undertake any offer of partnership coming in future. Northeast is one of the important part of the country. Better connectivity to the Northeast state is our utmost priority. We have opened the long-awaited broad gauge Lumding Silchar section in Assam, thus connecting Barak Valley with the rest of the country. We also brought Agartala, the capital of Tripura, on the broad gauge network. The states of Mizoram and Manipur are also set to come on broad gauge map of the country soon with commissioning of Kathakal, Bhairabi and Arunachal Jiribam gauge conversion project. In JNK, Jammu and Kashmir, despite difficult terrain and uncertain geology, work on Katra Banihal section of Udampur Srinagar Baramula rail link project is progressing satisfactorily and 35 kilometers of tunneling out of total of 95 kilometers has been completed successfully. The decongestion work on the Jalandar Jammu line, an important link to the valley, is going on in full swing. Doubling of two bridges will be commissioned by March 2016 in next month, while the other two bridges will be completed by 2016-17. Make in India. In keeping with our Prime Minister's emphasis on Make in India, we were able to finalize the bids for setting up of two local factories with an order book of about 40,000 crores. These factories will create an ecosystem of many flourishing small and medium ancillary units which will get connected to the global supply chain. They will boost employment potential for the entire eastern region. We ran a bidding process that was absolutely transparent and the rates received were extremely competitive. We have since initiated a similar bid process for manufacture, supply and maintenance of train sets to be used for Rajdani and Shatabdi services. It is proposed to increase the current procurement by 30 percent. Capacity building for the future. In the last one year, we have taken several measures to build the capacity of the organization to ensure readiness for the accelerated growth envisioned by us. The outcome of the exercise has resulted in increased absorption of capital expenditure and reduced project sanction cycle. Transparency is an important tenet of a government. We, our mission is to ensure 100 percent transparency in all its operations. We have initiated the process of conducting recruitment online in the, and are in the process now being replicated for all positions. Social media is also being used as a tool to bring transparency in our day-to-day -day working. All procurement, including procurement of work, has moved to the e-platform. We intend to usher into a new era by switching over to the paperless contact management system where not only the bids are invited online, but the entire process leading to award of a tender is also done electronically. We have completed a trial run for the above and we intend to roll out on a pan-India basis in the next financial year. With a view to ensuring empowerment at functional level, I delegated to the zonal railways all tender and estimated related powers. However, my task is not yet complete and this process will go on. As a result of the above, we were able to ensure that a project gets sanctioned within a period of six to eight months, a process which earlier used to take more than two years. With more delegation comes greater accountability and to establish a new culture, key result areas have been defined for general managers and divisional railway managers. 
These areas clearly articulate the metrics on which the officials will be evaluated, ensuring objectivity in assessment of performance and mid-term course correction. We have signed MOUs with some zonal railways where quantifiable targets on performance parameters were clearly laid out. This ensured resounding commitment from these railways in meeting the targets. We shall do it for all the zones in next year. We have also revamped our internal audit system with a view to bringing in efficiency in our working practices. Specialized teams have been mandated to screen railway operations in specific areas to de detect inefficiencies and prevent wastages. All zonal railways have been asked to prepare two such reports in the current year. Specialized training course on IT-based internal audit mechanism has also been initiated and to give professional teeth to internal audit teams. The Cabinet, in a historic decision, has allowed for the creation of joint venture with the state government for undertaking rail-based projects. This decision will open up new vistas for sharing the ownership of railways, enhance management bandwidth for project execution, and strengthen the spirit of cooperative federalism, which our Prime Minister always articulates, and enable states to jointly decide the priorities for development of backward regions. We have received, in principle, approvals from 17 states, out of which six MOUs have already been signed. This year, we have indicated 44 new projects covering about 5,300 kilometers, valuing about 92,714 crores in the budget document. It's a record. We have also forged a partnership with Ministry of Coal, Steel Authority of India, NTPC, to expedite the PACE project execution through innovative financing. The common people have always been the focus of all our initiatives. It has been an unprecedented year for customer-oriented works. Our responsiveness to customer needs reached new heights when we turned social media into a feedback and complete redressal mechanism. In addition, we set up a dedicated IVRS system to seek direct feedback from passengers. More than one lakh telephone calls are made every day to seek inputs from passengers. With all these measures, we are able to give voice to the customer that was not only heard, but also acted upon. These channels were used not only to seek feedback, but to provide medical care, safety of passengers, especially women, and other aspects of human care, and also help us to monitor the cleanliness of stations and trains. Today, there is no barrier between common passenger and the railway. We have taken a series of measures to significantly improve the quality of train services. In this effort, we have received assistance through funds from MPLAD and CSR. I am happy to inform that 124 MPs have given their commitment to contribute for passenger amenities. I thank each one of them for the help and hope to have the benefit of the assistance in the next year also. We have generated 65,000 additional berths by augmenting 884 coaches. We installed 2,000 water vending machines at stations, provided motor, mobile charging points in general class coaches, placed dustbins in all new non-AC coaches, enabled online booking of retiring rooms, set up mechanized laundries to provide clean and hygienic bed rolls. Disposable bed rolls are now available at select stations to all classes of passengers. Introduce a new train between Varanasi and Delhi, Mahamana Express, with modern refurbished coaches. In pursuance of our mission of Swatch Rail, Swatch Bharat, I am happy to inform the House that 17,000 bio toilets in trains and additional toilets at 475 stations will be provided before the close of this financial year. World's first bio vacuum toilet was developed by us, in, is being used in Diburgad Rajdani Express. 74 more new trains have been added under onboard housekeeping service and another 400 to be covered soon, leading to a total number of almost 1,000 trains under the scheme. The punctuality performance of passenger train has been a matter of concern for several decades. We have a porous network which leads to rampant infiltration by humans and animals. Problems are compounded by congestion in tracks, terminal capacity constant and asset failures. The worst affected is the busy Ghaziabad to Mughal Sarai section through Allahabad and Kanpur, which spreads across three zonal railways, 
thereby impacting the overall functionality of the entire network. We initiated the audit of operations on this section to improve our performance. Some improvement is already visible and capacity augmentation in the medium term will further reduce the delays. Besides internal reasons, there are also external reasons such as agitations on railway tax which lead to punctuality losses. I appeal to all my fellow citizens to desist from this as it causes not only to the nation, loss to the nation, but also to them as passengers. Last year, I had announced operation five minutes to enable passengers to purchase tickets without spending long hours in queue. In this context, we introduced 1,780 automatic ticket vending machine and 225 cash coin and smart card operated ticket vending machines. Enhanced capacity of e-ticketing system from 2,000 tickets per minute to 7,200 tickets per minute to support 1,20,000 concurrent users as against only 40,000 earlier. Introduce mobile-based apps for purchasing unreserved and platform tickets and Go India Smart Card scheme for cashless purchase of UTS and PRS ticket. For the Divyan, we introduce one-time registration for availing concessions while booking tickets online. Also wheelchairs and